Hi, boys and girls. Good morning. Buenos dias. All right. We're always going to start. Remember this picture with our brain smart. We're going to start with our hello song. Ready? And it's to shoe fly, don't bother me. You know the song goes, shoe fly, don't bother me. Shoe fly, don't bother me. Shoe fly, don't bother me. For I belong to somebody. This one's going to go, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Are you ready to have some fun? Ready? Then you go, stand up and turn around. Ooh. Then sit down in your chair give me a great big clap now fold your hands in your lap isn't that a good one we're gonna learn that all week okay miss stacy and miss vicky are learning it too <laughs> all right next what comes next who knows our i love you i love you ritual okay and you're going to start with your pinky finger. We're going to use all the fingers on your hand, on one hand. So pick one hand. You're going to use how many? One, two, three, four, five fingers. And you're going to start with your pinky finger. Ready? You're going to say, this little finger went to school in a car. This little finger rode the bus. Beep, beep. This tall finger rode his bus bicycle and this one chose to walk this thumb lived so far away that it had to go up the hill and down the hill up the hill and down up the hill and around to get inside the school you like that one i like that one too and then the story we're going to read, look, the story is going to be about baking bread. So this week, we're going to be talking about celebrations a little bit and um, maybe some, we're all going to all send a recipe in. I hope some of you have already done that, but if you haven't, please send your recipe in. Any kind of recipe, it can be your favorite apples with peanut butter on them maybe you put raisins or something or something on top or cinnamon right it can be that simple or it can be a really nice recipe a big one that you and your family like to eat together but this one is about baking bread remember when we've been talking about baking cookies and cupcakes and pizzas remember from a couple weeks ago this one's going to talk to us about this says baking bread it says with grandma what's grandma in spanish Abuela. Oh, I know in German they call it Omi or Oma, and I think in Polish it's Babcha. Yeah, if anybody has any other, I would love to learn what you call grandma. You can tell us that today. Baking bread with grandma. Okay. Hi, my name is Lucia, and this is my brother Anthony. Every Sunday, we go to my grandma's house, and today she's going to teach us how to bake biscuits. I can't wait to get started. What do you notice? What does grandma have already prepared? Hmm. The first thing we do is wash our hands. Grandma has a special stool for us in the kitchen that we stand on to reach the sink. See? They have a stool. Does some of you have a stool? I have a stool for my um, daughter in the bathroom so she can reach her, the sink when she brushes her teeth or washes her hands. Washing your hands before baking helps, helps your food stay germ-free and safe to eat. This is an important part of food safety, which mm. means following certain rules when touching, making, or storing food. Keeping the kitchen clean is another part of food safety. Clean your tables or countertops with soap, water, and paper towels before you begin. So they have a sponge and she has soap and she has a spray bottle to mix the soap with the water so she can clean and paper towels. Now it is time to measure out all the dry ingredients. I scoop up two cups of flour and pour the flour into a big bowl. See the flour? There she is, pouring the flour. 
Grandma adds two tablespoons of sugar. She's at, there's the sugar and the tablespoon. These are the, remember when we brought our measuring spoons over here? We brought our measuring spoons. I remember when we brought those to circle time. And she measured one tablespoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Anthony uses the spoon to stir it all up. So there's Anthony stirring away. There are many different kinds of flour that you can use to make biscuits. The most common type is wheat flour, but you can use corn, rice, or coconut flour. So this is what, you look close, corn, I, I don't know if you could see it on the, over through the computer, but this is a little more yellow like or orange like corn. And then rice flour, wheat flour, and coconut are all white. You will use a teaspoon and a tablespoon to measure the ingredients. That's down here. The teaspoon is smaller than the tablespoon. In fact, there are three teaspoons in one tablespoon. So a tablespoon, there's one, two, three teaspoons equal one tablespoon. Ooh, what do we have here? Grandma takes out a half a cup of butter from the refrigerator, the sticks of butter. That's one whole stick of butter. She has a special tool called a pastry blender, which cuts the cold butter into the flour and other ingredients. So this is called uh, the pastry blender and she kind of has like little slicing on it and you, she holds it and she kind of slices it into the flour. There it is, there it is up close. When you take the butter out of the refrigerator, it's cold and hard, making it difficult to cut and mix the other ingredients. A pastry blender helps you cut the butter just to the right size. If you don't have a pastry blender, you, you can use a fork or two knives to cut the butter into the flour. And then when baking biscuits, using cold butter helps them be fluffy and flaky. So you don't want to melt the butter. You don't want melted butter. You want to use cold butter from the refrigerator. Then the butter and the flour start to look crumbly and Anthony pours in three fourths cup of buttermilk and then grandma mixes the ingredients to make the dough. See, so first it looks like that and then when the dough, she pours that in, and then it starts looking like that. Oh, what do we have here? Measuring cups come in different sizes. If you don't have the right size cup, sometimes you can use a smaller one and fill it several times. So you'll need one cup of flour, but if you don't have a one cup measuring cup, you can use the fourth cup, that's the little one, and fill it four times. So see, it says one fourth on it. You're gonna use one, two, three, four of those to equal one cup of flour. It's fun to play with measuring cups. If you want, maybe later or during playtime, you can get out some measuring spoons or measuring cups and um, maybe you can use rice or you can use sand or you can use water even. So you can see in a big bowl and you can see how many fourth, one fourth cups equal the one cup. Grandma shows me how to use a rolling pin to roll it out. Then it's my turn to try. I roll out the dough until it's about one inch thick. Grandma reminds me to use lots of flour on the counter so the dough doesn't stick. So here's grandma rolling it out and they're, they're using flour. So they, they have their countertop and they put flour on their countertop. So they roll it out so the dough doesn't stick. And that's called a rolling pin. Rolling pins come in different styles. Some rolling pins are long and straight. Some are tapered and get smaller at the ends. Some have handles. If you don't have a rolling pin, you could pin you could just use your hands. So there's the long and straight one. There's a tapered one. See how it's big in the middle and then it kind of gets smaller mm. at the side. That's called tapered. And then here's one with handles. This one is really the, the easiest, I think, because it has the handles. Some people like that. Although some people like this one too. Do you have a rolling pin, Miss Vicky? I, I don't, but my mom does. And we always usually bake at her house and she always used to tell us the same thing. This use a lot is, of flour and she taught us how to use a rolling pin. It's really rolling fun. Pins are, yeah, if you have one at your house, they're really kind of fun. Maybe, or if you even have one with your Play-Doh tools, it's really oh, yeah. fun to practice rolling those out. Kind of, it makes your hands stronger. So you're then ready to write. They're nice and strong so you can write. Grandma uses a round glass to cut the biscuits from the dough. She shows us how she twists the glass to cut the dough, which helps the biscuits rise. 
So let's see. Let's see her doing it. There she is. And there's the dough. And there she's cutting. So she's using this cup and she's twisting to cut it. And then she's putting them on here. There's a tool called a biscuit cutter that's used to cut biscuits to the same size and shape. And then it helps them bake evenly. But remember, if you don't have that, you could use the cup, that, like a glass cup that like grandma used, right? If you don't have a biscuit cutter yet, you just use a clean glass, an empty jar, or even a can to cut your biscuits. Ooh, what's gonna happen next? Then grandma turns on the oven to 425 degrees. That's hot, right? Fahrenheit. Anthony and I stand back, they, Anthony and I stand back as she carefully puts the biscuits into the oven. And they will be ready in about 12 minutes. While we wait for biscuits to bake, we help grandma clean up the dishes and the and the counters. I can't wait to try our biscuits. So here, you know, notice because it's so hot, she's using oven mitts. Mm -hmm. and, look, and then they're washing, they're cleaning the dishes. And then the biscuits are ready. Ovens are hot and should only be used by a grown up or an adult, right? After the biscuits are safely in the oven, you can ask your grown-up to help you look through the oven window and watch them rise to golden brown. So they set a timer. This is a timer. And they set it to 12 minutes, which is in between the, the 10 and the 15. 12 minutes. Ovens often have timers on them to tell us where the, when the food is finished cooking. She sets the timer for 12 minutes. And when it beeps, you can check and see if they're ready. Now it's my favorite part, eating the biscuits. Anthony likes to eat his with just butter, but I like to add a little honey to mine. Grandma says that butter with blackberry jam is her favorite. Hmm, how would you eat biscuits? How do you eat them? Um, I like I like strawberry jam, but I also like them plain. There's strawberry jam. Some people use gravy. I like mine with some honey. Some people even eat them with cheese. Ooh. You could try different toppings and see which ones you like best. The end. And then at the end here, look, it has, this is the recipe. A recipe is something that you follow step by step. I see how it says step one, step two, step three. It tells you exactly what to do step by step so you can make the buttermilk biscuits. And there you go. The end. Ooh, what do you like to bake? <clears throat> I like to make cookies, right? <laughs> cookies are dope. Cupcakes, cakes. Maybe Sweet. someone can send us a baking recipe, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we like baking recipes. Or I like eating. I, I don't, what else can you bake? I would like uh, to bake pretzels. Wouldn't that be fun? Because I bet you twist the dough. That would be really fun. And we'll have to think about that for later, okay? Let us know what you would like to bake, okay? All right, let's sing. Ready? See you later. See you later. See you later when we meet again. See you later.